comedic renaissance, please welcome Jamie Kilstein. Hey. Uh, wow, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm from uh, America, and uh, just thought I'd let you know what's good. No, you can't boo anymore, because we elected the black guy, sir. <laughs> You can still boo a little bit, actually. Here's what's going on right now is uh, we actually, as we speak, there's a city in Texas uh, that's trying to make it legal for, how do I say this, uh, mentally disturbed people to own guns. Yes, that laugh is the honest response, by the way. And the, the courts and the judges, they agreed with you. They were like, no, no. Uh, but then I'm watching the news and Republicans started to protest where they were saying that the founding fathers of America would want everybody to own guns, right? And so I'm watching them march and they're chanting. They're saying the founding fathers would be astonished. The founding fathers would be astonished. It's like, you know what else would astonish the founding fathers? The internet, uh, women voting, white people doing their own laundry. That might throw them for a bit of a curveball, those guys were kind of jerks. Like, I don't know why we still idolize them. The Constitution was like their one-hit wonder. They're like the vanilla ice of the political world. <laughs> it's time to move on. But I'm excited about Barack Obama. What doesn't excite me, though, is right after he won, everybody started saying in America that racism's over. And that scares me because, like, you know how everybody has, like, that one racist friend? And, uh... Maybe more, judging by that reaction. Uh, I'm sorry, I misjudged you lovely people. You know how everybody has a plethora of racist friends? <laughs> and they all kind of just gather around at the office and they'll tell these awful racist jokes, but their big excuse is they're like, nah, man, it's cool, I can say that I have a black friend. <laughs> totally cool, I have a black friend. Uh, I'm afraid America's that racist guy and Barack Obama's now our black friend. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Where it's like, woo, we elected a black guy. Just like, yeah, but didn't you let the city of New Orleans drown and the majority of your prison population is African-American because of unfair drug laws? Uh, I'm sorry, didn't you meet my friend, Barack Obama? <laughs> I think it's gonna be all right. He plays basketball, it's fine. <laughs> he does play basketball. Oh my God, did you see when he was campaigning and he went to this university and he shot that three-pointer, went nothing but net? That shut up every journalist that was like, is he really black? Really? <laughs> it's exciting though, Barack Obama, uh, one of the things he wants to do, he wants to overturn one of our most homophobic policy, our policy that doesn't allow gay people to serve openly in the military, right? So I was on the radio the other day defending gays in the military. I was on the radio because I'm very famous in dying mediums. And <laughs> I was on the radio, it used to be so cool, man. They used to play jazz and blues and all this new independent music. And now I feel like every station just plays the same songs. I feel like radio's motto should just be, radio, I hope you like Nickelback, and I don't. Uh, <laughs> so I'm on the radio, right? And this guy calls up and he goes, you can't have gays in the military because I'm a Marine and I might get raped. <laughs> but he said it with that weird confidence that straight guys have sometimes. He said it with such confidence and he said it with such clarity where it's like, oh, you've thought about this before. Where it's like, yeah, I'm gonna get raped. I know exactly how it's gonna happen too. All right. I'm lying shirtless on my bunk. Then I hear a slight pitter-patter at my window, feel a warm, moist breath on the base of my neck. It's like, that doesn't sound like a fear. That sounds like a fantasy. So then I go, look, man, I've read up on this. The majority of people who are raped in the military, they're women. And he says, yeah, I know that. But what if gay people find out about that statistic? They get the idea and they start raping me. Therefore, no gay rule. And I was like, how about just a no rape rule? <laughs> that sounds like a much better rule. That sounds like a good rule for any place of work, really. Just welcome to your first day. Uh, don't steal nothing, don't rape nothing, lunch is at 12. There you go. But it's weird, man, you watch these people who you know, I started getting hate mail from these right-wing Christian groups for just saying stuff like that. And I remember I got this one letter, the most vicious letter I got. Uh, she Facebooked me, which was weird. Uh, no poke, just the message. Uh, <laughs> and if there was a poke, I wouldn't be able to find it because the new format can kiss my ass. Uh, 
If you're not Twitter, Facebook, love you for you. Now, here is a letter I've memorized. That this is exactly what she wrote to me on Facebook. She wrote, Dear Jamie, just want you to know that we are praying for you to develop a painful cancerous tumor inside of you. We, we will not leave your girlfriend out of our prayers either. We are praying for her to develop a painful cancerous tumor inside of her disgusting left-wing breasts. And without health insurance, you know what the end result will be and know that I and many others will be smiling. Now, I did write her back. I did write her back. All I wrote back, I wrote, uh, I wrote, are you flirting with me? <laughs> nope. Uh-uh. But it's weird when you watch people protest against gays. The biggest argument you hear is being gay is unnatural, right? Being gay is unnatural, and they know this because the Bible says that being gay is unnatural. And it's like, I've read the Bible. There's a lot of unnatural shit in that book. Like, I would say a dude dying, right, then rising from the dead in a zombie-like fashion is far less natural than me sucking a cock. Because <laughs> at least cock-sucking you can prove. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I've seen pictures of dudes sucking other dudes' cocks because I have an asshole brother with an email account. <laughs> and and I don't learn my lesson ever. I'm like, ooh, what are these three old men doing? Oh, they're sucking dick. Of course they are. They're always sucking dick. You've seen the picture. Yes, and I always look at the picture because one day I assume they're going to be doing what regular old people do and playing cards or something, but nope, sucking dick because apparently that's what you do when you get older is you just get around with all your weird little mutant friends and you suck dick and you take pictures of it and you put it on the internet so my asshole brother Nick can send it to me and I open the email every time because my family hasn't talked to me in years because I didn't go to college and I do this shit for a living. So then I get the email and I'm like, oh my God, they love me again. And click dick sucking. Always. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of the show. See you later.